notes. All right. So first off, let's just discuss the lane, right? Karma, Karma, Jin, Thresh, Kayla. H how do you think this is going to be played out? Just if you get into this game and you're thinking about how you want to play this lane, how do you want to play it? I mean, if it was me, I'd probably want to shove wave into tower and get a hard reset whenever I can and try to freeze a lane near my tower. Because, like, they're really poke heavy, and if I freeze a lane, like, near my tower on my side of the river, I can kind of just wait for a jungle game. All right. Um, I mean, y y so... You're you're right, but you're you're way ahead of yourself is the problem. Okay. And what I mean by that is, in this kind of lane, it's essentially like it, it, you're you're never going to be able to freeze it on them unless you're strong enough to be to be threatening them. Because Karma and Jin will just always be able to outpush you. Karma Q is on you, too much pressure. Jin's Q's and Jin's autos have way too much pressure. You know what I mean? Like they they have way too much pressure. The only way that that would work is if Thresh gets a hook. So like again, that means we have to rely on support. But we can't be doing that until it actually happens. And so how do we play around our Thresh not hitting hooks, right? And that, that's kind of what we have to rely on at the start, is that we're going to have to assume, which is what we should always do, is we should always assume that our support is not going to be able to hit the hook that we need to hit to, to, to win the lane at like level 1, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what needs to happen is we need to somehow establish a lead. And then once, once we are stronger than them to the point where if they walk up too far, we're able to just force and engage, right? So Thresh is just able to walk up, flay, hook, whatever, and no matter what, you'll win it. That's when we want to go for the freeze because that's when we're able to pressure them off the wave and they're not going to be able to, uh, to just, you know, mindlessly queue and shove the wave out into your tower. Because right now, if, I, if we're early levels on Caitlyn Thresh, how are we going to stop them from just clearing the wave out in our tower, right? We, we really can't. So you're in, you have the right idea, but you're really far ahead. Does this, you're just far ahead of uh, yourself in the game. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So, like, what we need to be doing early is... One, we just need to be pretty much, they're, they're going to get, oh, he goes over the wall. That's the problem. What? Dude, what are you doing? They're, you're, they're right on their tower. This isn't going to work out. I don't know. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't he have flash up? Why don't he just flash up? Whatever. Um, that doesn't matter. But so pretty much what, we're, what we need to do is, obviously, our level 2 spike is ideal. Thresh is strong at level 2. He's got the hook flay. That's, that's a really good engage. The problem is that they're, we're not really going to be able to get that just because, I mean, you'll, you'll see here, right? As soon as they show up, Thresh can't walk up, and now they're just going to, you know, you guys just karma zoning. Let's see what's happening. Ideally, Thresh, the only way for you to get level 2 here is if Thresh can help you push late. But Thresh can't, because if he walks up, Karma's just going to kill you guys, Jin's going to hit you guys, and you guys are going to lose that trade, right? Yeah. So, we just pretty much have to play the de defensive game, which is what we do for a while, right? This is fine. That's really good. She walks up to hit you, you're walking back, not letting her take any damage. You just need to stay as healthy as you can for as long as possible, until eventually, around level 3, the wave should be bouncing back to them, and that'll be a window for uh, Thresh to hopefully be getting an engage. And if you guys aren't low enough, but if you guys are low, if if you get poked down in this lane, what's gonna in any poke lane? If you if you take the poke in a poke lane, you're gonna just get they're gonna snowball you, right? Because once you hit your tower, then you're not you're not even able to CS under your tower. And when that happens, you're in a bad spot, right? Yeah, they're just gonna tether under tower. Yeah. So so you're doing great here, and just in just not taking damage. That's what, what this is what we need to be focusing on. Um, first one so would be. Pretty much, if I need to give them like give up CS not to take damage, then I do it, right? Yes, absolutely, okay. absolutely. So, what you want actually is because Thresh can't get the engage here. Um, if he, if he can do it right now, this would actually be probably pretty good for you guys. But because he doesn't, this Q is bad. You want this minion to be alive because you want this to come into you at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is if this minion, this is important by the way. If this minion stays alive, they have two minions here then this next wave is going to crash, right? They're going to have eight minions. And this minion's yeah, going to die. Crush. This den's going to have six. Right, so it'll push you. So it'll still push you with, with seven, right, instead of eight, if you kill this one like you do. It just won't push as hard. It won't push as hard, as well as what happens is these minions are now going to have a better chance of thinning out their wave before it crashes your tower. So it might end up, instead of being seven, uh, by the time your mini wave's down to zero and it's coming into your tower, this wave might be down to five or four, right, coming into your tower. Mm -hmm. Instead of, uh, if you leave it at eight, it's more likely to stay up at six or seven. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and it'll come into you faster. You don't have to wait as long. So we, we don't want to queue this. We want to let this mini stay alive and come into us. Because at this point, they've already, like, the, the way that this is set up, right, they've already pretty much established that it's going to be coming into you guys. There's not really much you guys can do can, that you can do to contest this because they can just poke you off of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, we, we, again, we don't want to be hitting this at this point. Why does that keep happening? We don't want to be hitting it at this point. We just want to be last hitting only, letting it come into you. <clears throat> 
and it's annoying because Thresh could still be putting more pressure out. Because honestly, these they're playing this lane wrong right now, in the sense that they're not just hard shoving you in for some reason, and Karma's not poking you guys enough. She's just kind of letting you hit this equally. So this this is actually, I mean, this works. Like, keeping the lane even works for you guys, because, you know, then you can stay within your minions, but it shouldn't be happening, if that makes sense. Like, they shouldn't be letting this happen on their side. Yeah, so, no, Karma so, should be zoning yourself away. Right. So if you could be just keeping the wave even and just playing in your, the pockets of your minions and making sure you're staying opposite of Karma, not taking cues, that's fine, that's good. But most of the time, they're just going to be pushing you. <clears throat> And now that we have level 3, we have more potential. See, like right there, you, you sacrificed a, a caster to not take damage from Karma. That was good. <laughs> right, what was I think there was a point. Okay, yeah. So at this point, actually, oh, so this is yeah, this is this is ideal. This is actually good for you guys in the sense that you're keeping it even. That that's ideal. So because you know, then she can't just free harass you because you're gonna have a wave to sit behind. But again, she shouldn't be letting it happen. So if they're playing it properly and you find that their karma is playing a lot more pressure oriented and actually zoning you more, um, we're gonna just be letting the wave come into us, right? Yeah, we'll just let it push. Uh, they don't even freeze on this elo anyways. They don't know what the fuck that is. They just hard right, push. Right. Which I mean, they're th this lane should be hard pushing you guys. But well, something to recognize though is we don't want to be in the case where they get the wave stuck up here. So we, oh, we yeah, if, no, if anything, fucked. you need to make sure that you're only keeping it even around here, or at least it's coming into you. Because at this point, when it, yeah, if you get it frozen on that you up here. Then Karma can just stand on her melee minions and make sure you guys don't come up, right? And and you're also afraid of a jungle gang. So just be aware of the fact that, okay, I, I don't want, like, the, you know, if you're against Karma, uh, Zyra, any, any champion that has a lot of poke, you know, you don't want the wave to be stuck up here because you're not going to be able to, like, with a Thresh at least, you're not going to be able to walk up to push it out, right? I'm sure you've yeah. been in the situation. If you have, like, a Nami or something, then you can maybe try to push up more because Nami can sustain the poke that they have on you guys, and she can also trade herself, right? Um, mm -hmm. But in this case, we, we, don't, we definitely don't want to get it stuck up. <clears throat> That's a crazy hitbox. That yeah. shouldn't even hit me. Well, it's because it's the, that that AOE field is the whole hitbox from the Q. I saw one. Yikes! <laughs> Wave is reset again. We're playing pocket. We don't want to take that Q damage. So this was just, you got a little impatient to damage her here, but damage on her, just, just understand that trading with her, like, is not beneficial for you ever, pretty much, at this, at this point. If you, trading, when you're an all-in lane like this, against a poke lane, it's never worth it to trade. Like, unless, I mean, unless you're, you're going to be damaging her without hitting, her hitting you, because what happens, again, you know, if you take this damage and you get dropped onto this much HP, you have a lot less chance of walking up to contest this wave or CS at all. Now, Karma, if you get dropped low enough, can just stand even further up and just harass you off the wave completely, right? Yeah. So we need to avoid trades, just stay healthy, because we, we, we need to be as healthy as we can, so if Thresh lands his hook, we can follow in. If, if we're not healthy and Thresh lands a hook, it's a wasted hook, right? We're, we can't do anything on that. We need to be at a high enough HP that if Thresh gets an engage, we're able to follow in and continue to fight off of this. And okay, it's important to, rec to recognize here, your jungler got a kill in their... Uh, well, actually, b before that even... You, you should be looking at the map like every five seconds. I hope you do. You should just be no, glancing my map at it. Awareness is probably dog shit. That's really, really important to fix. You, within five seconds, you should be looking at it every single time. Within five seconds. Never more than five seconds without a look at the map. Because you should be seeing that Sejuani is here and Annalise, and you should be able to look at it, look at the fight, see who's winning it. If Sejuani's losing it and Elise is winning it, you guys fuck this and you guys walk up. Because you want to cut off all Sejuani's support, right? And so if you guys start walking up, and Sejuani's already, if she's already losing this, right, and, you, and you're walking up, then that means that they're going to try to follow you. You're not going to turn on them. You're just going to keep walking up. 
And if Elise kills Sejuani, um, then so, then Elise can now come down to help you guys. Three v two, yeah. Yeah, and what happens? But but what happens is if 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 you look at this and Sejuani's losing it and you don't go up and they see it first and go up, now Elise is gonna die for no reason and she has a problem. What happens if Sejuani's winning it? Then you just say fuck it and that's her problem. Because because. The pro like if if you guys are up here pushed up on them like which we've already discussed yeah, in this no, in this lane yeah in this, exactly then you can go up and help no matter what but in this lane this is probably not going to happen right as we discussed you guys are probably never going to be up here so priority against these two as uh, Thresh is pretty much impossible because Karma can push the wave Thresh can't so but but you really need to look at your look at look at the jungler to get the information on the fight All, their health bars tell you enough Elise's health bar alone doesn't tell you enough but if you see that they're winning it allows you to go up here and you'll know that you'll have Elise's support afterwards right you're not going to walk up here and try to trade with them you're just going to walk up here and ignore them and just try to get to Sejuani or Elise right um and, and they're positioning you in a spot that you're able to do that if Karma's sitting up here that, that you can't really walk up right but what happens at that point if you see Karma start, starting to walk up you walk up a little bit into her range to pressure her off of trying to go up there right does that make sense so so like if you walk up here she's gonna think oh okay now i can turn on to you guys and then you just turn away and then you just keep dancing with her right you just can kind of keep dancing back and forth hey i'm walking up here karma walks up here and when you get up here she turns around i turn around and then uh, she turns around to go up and help and i turn around to go up here right and it's gonna be, be kind of just be a dance does that make sense hmm and again, you you have to avoid the all. If they then like flash on you and go in or something, you have to get out with their flash and heal or whatever you need to do. Just stay healthy. If they blow their summoners and you trade summoners, that's fine. You just need to stay healthy and you're just giving pressure for your jungler. Because this is really good that at least kills Sejuani. But the problem is, um, see, Karma's now walking up. And this is ideal that at least actually gets the kill beforehand. But she's pretty low. And now Karma's gone. And now Karma can go solo her. And we don't really, we're not there in position, right? But if we're already walking up, the Karma can't do it. I think Karma actually turns back because she got the kill, which is good because Elise would have just came down anyways. But we need to be in the mindset to to go assist her, right? It's really important as bot lane that you're that you're helping your jungler out when they yeah. need it. And then this is a point where we should probably just stay under tower and see how this goes because they're pressuring these two off the wave. We can actually go up and start hitting this wave while they're while they're getting pressured. You don't. You won't go in and try to help them with this fight while you're one HP. But you can actually now, right, right now, put some pressure on the wave, right, and not miss so much CS. Yeah, because I'm I'm just like ten creeps right there. Yeah, which sucks. All right, and then we get here. All right, now this is now why right here do we want to go for a slow push instead of hard shot this? I mean, it just kind of gives like if they trade with us, the minions are going to aggro them, so it kind of gives us a little bit of an advantage. And it's a lot harder for Karma to hit her Q with that, that amount of minions. All right, exactly. Yeah, it just gives us a safety net here, right? It gives us the pressure. Yeah. So we, we're just going to have a big wave to sit behind, and then when they come to lane, we're, we can kind of push it on them. And th this is what's going to give us priority for a little bit. Also, it, you know, it uh, having a big wave like this just gives you that safety net that they can't really engage on you at all. Like, there's pretty much no way they can they can come into your wave. So you're it pretty much guarantees right here that we're going to get priority. Now, if you're really, really far behind, like, and Jin has a BF sword, and you're like, you don't have anything, it's gonna be kind of hard to get keep this, just because again, Karma and Jin can push the wave together and unfreeze it really, really, or un like, like thin out your wave really easily. Um, this is a case where we need to go over trap usage. This is a pretty pointless hook, but all right, when this starts going bad, all right, we should be dropping trap right here. This trap, think. Don't think of traps as like a must-hit use ability. Traps are pressure. Traps create pressure. If you put a trap right here, these two cannot walk straight forward anymore, and Thresh can get out. Otherwise, they're going to step into it, and you get free damage on them. A lot of damage, right? And if they, yeah. if this one, you put this one down, and if they go around it, and they keep chasing him, you put one right here, right? If Karma moves right here, and that, you just keep doing that in between your auto attacks. Just use traps as pressure. Instead of like... Traps pressure people. If you ever put a trap in between two people, it's going to pressure them off of them. So use traps for pressure more so than like, oh, I need to drop it. See, you dropped it right under him. Don't do that. Put it right in front of him. So he can't walk up anymore? Right. Uh, plus, because plus, if he just steps at all now, it, this isn't going to trap on him. Because it takes like a second before it'll actually proc, right? right? So proc, yeah, yeah. He, there he walks back onto it. but And I... I in in the in the in platinum, pe people aren't going to be paying that much attention to your traps. You're going to find that you'll hit a lot of people when they're just walking into your trap when you put it in, put it in front of them.
But yeah, this was overall a pretty bad play by Thresh. I don't know why I did this. <laughs> really sucks. Um, she flashed on me too. I actually yeah. didn't even notice that. Didn't even give me a chance to react to it. But I know some anyways. I don't really think I could have done anything. All right, at this point, we're far behind, so we can't really contest or push at all, and they're just going to pressure us and have permanent priority. Tell Thresh hopefully gets a hook, or we can get a successful gank. I think this is coming up. Yep, this is where we end up rubbing up, I think, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I so. Think I, think, I think it is. You might be right. Maybe not. Look. Yeah, I think that's much later in the game. That yeah, probably is. All right, but there is one thing that I, this was the note I put here. Okay, in this case, we come to lane and we see our. We again, we need to be seeing our map, and we see Elise is going to her side of the jungle. This we don't. We don't want to hard push, actually. We want to not hit this at all right now, and we want to leave it, like, kind of right here, and we actually want to position ourselves up here. This okay. it, this being, because if we stand up here, we just, we're standing with our with our wave, right? Um, we're, we're just going to last hit for now, and the, well, we, I mean, you can start pushing, and you can start going for a push, but the problem is, if you push this, and something happens right here, then if you started a push, and you have to run up to help, it's going to push into them. Right. Yeah. Whereas if it's reset and you just go and you have to go up and help and you haven't hit the wave at all and it's just you know except for maybe one last hit, it'll stay pretty even for the fight that you're up here. And so when you come back, you'll be able to catch that wave, still. So what, what the reason we need to be positioned up here though is because we need to be in position for if something happens to you, we need to already be in position to rotate up. And and there's no reason for us to be this far back right now. We have vision of this bush. If they're in this bush, it doesn't matter if we're right here. They can't hit us from here, right? Um, they're not going to come on us from the river because we see Elise is in the river already. So we need to be standing a little further up just so we're in position to go help Elise when necessary. Because you should, again, you should always be looking to help your jungler when, when uh, it's possible to. Gotcha. Like, see right here, now that this minion's up here, we should be up here. And then if you see the, their bot lane in, coming out, like, right here towards you, then, you, then you just back up. But until then, you position aggressively to be able to walk up and help your jungler. That was a terrible dragon call. Your mid laner was roaming top side. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Hey, no dragon calls make sense in this elo. You know, the biggest thing is I thought it would like be a huge improvement going from silver to plat, and I felt I feel like plat's like almost the same thing as silver, <laughs> except people people know how to last hit. Like that's probably the it, only difference. Yeah, it's literally the only difference for silver to platinum, and NA is pretty much mechanics. Like, you know how to last hit and get gold. Yeah, you know how to combo a little better. You know your damage is a little better. It's pretty much just you know how to fight better. You, people still don't understand the game at all. Yeah, but Zen actually said something like this, too. He said, like, I do really good in lane, except for when I'm going against a poke lane. He said, when you go against a poke lane, you play really, really poorly. Dude, if he didn't fucking auto attack that minion, I swear I would have had it. Is there a bottom lane just like randomly reset here? I guess it was. Yeah. I 
I wanted to shove that wave so they can't do a freeze right there, but Thresh already like backed out, so I was like, fuck. Yeah, he, he went too far back too fast. I wanted to He had the right idea up. of like giving you a lantern, but he needed to pressure for a little bit longer before he went back for that. All right, and then here, all right, at this point, we can't, like, at this point, when you're this far behind them, they're, they have a really big advantage. We can't really go for a slow push anymore. Can't really do anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, like, in this case, if you if they weren't here and you you could push or, like, go for slow push, you would just instantly start trying to shove this to their tower because you just want to try to get priority on them at this point. Just Because, like, against a poke lane, what happens is, like, ideally for you guys, you push it to their tower and, at, like, at, in in later stages obviously you can't do it early again it is ideal early but it's very like almost impossible for it to happen but you push into their tower and the thresh is able to like get a realm off since you're pretty much not going to kill them ever unless do you think you're do you farther think ahead like d shield this game um i don't think d shield would have changed much for you to be honest i think you did fine in terms of not taking damage d shield is i mean you can take it if you think you're gonna hit a lot or if you want to take hits a lot but i think you did fine this game without it you didn't get poked too much. I mean, they really snowballed off my Elise and Thresh. To be See, honest. this is where we got hit by the yeah, Jin okay. W. Heal needs to come out, like, at this point? Alright. That's such a big Jin Q that hits you. Yeah, when you like see Sejuani, we pretty much need to heal right now. This has to, as soon as you see Karma's engaging on you, you have to heal, because she's going to ignite you, and you have to heal before the ignite. Yeah, no, I healed when I ignited yeah. and didn't do don't, anything. Don't feel like you have to be constricted to using heal when you're at 200 HP. You can use it when you're half HP. Like, a lot, a lot of time I do use it half If I'm playing against a Thresh and he hooks me, hooks me, I'm instantly healing at level 2. I don't give a fuck. I'm literally, like, if he hooks me and I am 75% HP, I will heal. <laughs> like, because if he gets the flay on me and then ignites me, I'm dead. Yeah. All right, this gets to the point where you wanted to hold this wave, but honestly, at this point, it doesn't make sense for you to hold this wave here because you're you're too. Again, remember what I said earlier: like you you can go for like a freeze or holding a wave when you're ahead against them. When Thresh is strong, when you guys are strong enough, that Thresh's pressure is too much for them to walk up against, right? So if, if yeah. right now at this point in the game you knew that Thresh could like stand up here and they'd have to be standing back here, otherwise like you get they can engage on and die, that's fine to go for this this slow push or holding it here. But since you know, like, we pretty much know at this point, right? The Thresh is not going to get an engage, and there's no way that we're we're going to kill them. We we pretty yeah, much I, need to just be going for pushing. But I feel like if I hard push this wave right here, I give them the potential to freeze. Jin cannot freeze a wave. It's pretty much impossible to freeze on Jin. Jin and Tristana are two champions that are like possible freeze. And again, even if they freeze at this point, it doesn't matter because you. Well, okay, let's see. Right here, if we just start shoving right here. The the thing is, it'll the, the lane will be reset at least. We, reset, we yeah. it's fine if it's reset or if it's pushed to them, but it's not okay for it to be hold, held right here now because it, 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 this all all that happens right here. Unless your Elise is gonna gank, which even if she does, it's still pretty hard for you guys to kill them at this point because they're they're really fast and they have pretty good ward coverage since you guys are pretty much just being pressured all the time. And if you do let let them keep it right here against them because they are ahead. They can just. This just gives them the opportunity to get free wards in your tri bush. Go into your jungle, look for Elias, get a ward down, or get a roam off. Or what's going to happen is uh, after they do that, they're just going to come back into this lane. And when you guys have it are holding it right here, they're just going to shove it anyways. You know, you can't stop their shove. That's the problem. You can't do this right now because you can't stop their shove. You guys are unable to stop their shove right now. Thresh and you are not strong enough. You guys don't have the two v two advantage on them. You can't freeze it on them, right? Mm. If you're ahead and you know that you're beating them, if you've already killed them a couple times, you go for the freeze because then they're going to be afraid of Thresh. Right now, they don't give a fuck about this Thresh. Yeah. And all it's going to do for the, is make it easier for them now to come in and shove it right here. But if it's reset in the middle of the lane, it's actually okay because now you know they, they, they can't go get a ward down, so they might be afraid to shove it in a little more, right? Because if they don't have a ward yet and... And and they can't they, then they don't really want to shove it in as fast because at least could be here. And if they go to ward it or if, if they shove it into you guys and go stand here, then at least now come down. 
So we have to yeah. play around the fact that, I mean, if this is a pink ward, I can't tell. I don't think it's a pink ward, but that's no, why that, that's why you want a pink ward really badly, especially is because if you can clear this vision and then reset the land right here, now they're now they're going to feel pressure because they don't know if they're getting ganked. They don't know if they're going to get ganked from Tribush, and if they shove it now, they're risking the fact that someone could be in Tribush or at least could be bot side. Or, uh, yeah, those are the, pretty much the two options, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why we'd want to keep it a little more reset in the lane. And then also that, that does let Thresh pressure a little more, right? Thresh can't pressure when you guys are down here because, again, they're just going to play in the pocket that Thresh can't hit them. Karma will just sit here and she'll queue the wave, push it out. Jin will just sit here and he'll queue the wave and push it out. And now look how fast it already hit your tower, right? You, immediately they came back and you're stuck back under your tower. So if it's reset, we have a little bit more of a chance to use our Q to try to thin out the wave, right? It's actually okay at this point. What we want to do is, if possible, if you if you guys can, uh, Thresh doesn't like miss a hook and lose pressure if he just holds onto the hook. Um, the wave will reset, and you can now just when it's reset and like when it's in a line, you know, like the line is lined up, you can just queue. Yeah. You can queue it and try to just get the push going, and try to just keep it reset, thinned out, and reset. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if it's if it's thinned out and you have a pink ward in there and it's reset and it's in the middle of the lane now you know they they can push it but what happens is if they do push it they're gonna feel more pressure right so the, so Thresh gets more pressure then because they don't have vision of this of uh, your tribush area so now again they don't know if your jungler's there and Thresh again you know Thresh can lantern her from here so they can't really they they can't just engage on you that gives you more pressure does that make sense. Mm -hmm. But you are you have the right idea to try to like fr freezing is good when you're ahead. Freezing is like one of the ultimate tactics when you're ahead. But that's when you're ahead, and the reason yeah, being, I thought they even do it when you're behind, just so that they can't, you know, they can't really engage on you since you're right next to your tower. But I it mean, it just depends on the match. They're just, right. they're just poked, exactly right? exactly. Yeah. If they do have engaged, then yeah, you can freeze it. Right. If they have if Nautilus they have or, something, or something, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then then you're sitting right here. How's Nautilus going to go into you? He's not really unless you give him like some really really obvious hook but we're, yeah. we're not going to do that of course so in this case they don't give a f they're not trying to engage on you anyways they're just trying to put pressure you on the tower and then get tower damage or pressure you on tower and then move up like this and go on to your release right mm -hmm. which is a good really really good move by karma um and i think this no this is is this where we roam up i think so yeah this is where we see thresh yeah up. this is yeah this is where we do it what the oh, okay let's see okay so this is again. This has to do with looking at your map. Um, it's really important to now go up just because you see the fight's going to break out. Pretty much, uh, it's pretty much with the information given at the time. It's pretty obvious that a fight will break out here. Maybe this isn't where we go up. Okay, I guess it's not yet. But this is also a harder time for you to go up because the mini waves are already crashing into your tower, right? Yeah. So you have a little less incentive to go up. But uh, th this is so important. That, this is important. I should have just broke this. I should have just reset the wave here. Yeah, again, this would be another time for you to reset the wave, right? Um, yeah, pretty much. Or, or if if your other if your minion wave is right here already, and this fight's going on right now, then you can leave it here and go yeah, up. Yeah, freeze it and then go up. And because rotate, yeah, yeah, because then you won't miss any minions, and Jin will. But but in this case, um, well, first of all. Again, this is something you need to be doing. Every time a fight's breaking out, you need to be moving your camera to it so you can get information on how it's going. Because that can tell you if you need to go up or not. If it's looking like a one fight or something, you you know, you might even be able to just go up there and get one kill with your ulti. And that's fucking perfect. Better than doing nothing. Yeah. Right? So we need to look at we need to look at the fights and get the information of can I get a kill here? Evaluate um if it's just worth it to go or not at all. If it absolutely looks inevitable or if your team's already, you know, you see, okay, these guys already all got out, then just okay, go back to my laning phase. I go. Right. But it's really, really important that we just at least look to help. <laughs> I alt tapped. You're good. My fucking RuneScape, dude. Dude, I used to play RuneScape. How I, long I, ago? I hadn't played it for years, and I just just got back into it a little bit. Good game, dude. Good game. I haven't played it in so long. <laughs> it's just a literal grind, dude. That is all it is. <laughs> Yeah, my friends are trying to get me into um, World of Warcraft. Oh, dude, I couldn't, I've never been able to get into WoW, man. I've tried so many times. I just That game is too grindy for me. It just feels like you're doing the same thing over and over, but I don't know. So, okay, th this is a good spot for um, traps. So when you're trapping, your trap's pretty good here, but put it, where's my, put it like 
more like back here rather than right here. Because they're, they're way more likely to step on it here. There's no way they're going to go in between these right here, right? It's better to just... Because mm. it's more likely that if you put it right on the tower, the hitboxes shrink from like the full circle to just being like this half circle. Because the trap will be sitting halfway inside the turret. But if it's right here, pretty much if they go anywhere behind the turret, they will step into it. And it's yeah, just fully they hidden. can't even see it. Yeah. And so what I'll usually do is I'll put one there. If they step on it, obviously you put another one down. But I'll put one there. The AD carry tens will tend to hug over here, so I'll drop one here. Now they can't CS from there, right? Unless it's a melee minion. He, there's no way he gets his range. So what they're going to do now is walk over here, and then you just drop one right here. And now the only place they can walk is right here. So now the, this, this sets up... EQ combo to the face? Sure, or a Thresh hook, because now Thresh can just position right here. And be yeah. like, good luck. Oh, but again, against this, 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 uh, against Jin Karma, it'll still be hard for Thresh to make anything happen right here. Um, so if this, this will be really, this is really good for like, you know, if you have the Karma right here, now Karma can just spam them right here, and now they'll never be able to. Like, it's really hard for them to yes. That just puts a lot of pressure on them under the tower. That's pretty much how I like to put my traps as Caitlyn under the tower, just because I think that creates the most pressure against them. Because again, trap traps are used. I don't use my traps to be like, oh, this is going to hit him. I use my traps so this should pressure him. And if he hits it, yeah, great, see, that's a bonus. And that's that's probably what I do wrong, right? I only throw my traps down if I'm like, yeah, this is definitely going to hit him. Right. And if you have three traps, you pretty much might just, you should always pretty much just use one just to get that, that make use of that recharge. No point in sitting on three at all times. <laughs> that was unlucky. That was a good look to gank from her, though, to be honest. That is a good look to gank. No, I'm just... Thresh is one for eleven so far, and the one he did hit was a pointless one. The one he did hit killed himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think you could have saved him with traps, though. Not gonna lie, so I probably could have honestly. Like, if I put a trap so they couldn't walk up, maybe. Yeah, because then I mean, it, it at least hit one of them, and then that should save him. Um, but. Yeah, and you had multiple up. So I mean, you you put one down, and someone else keeps chasing. You just put one in front of that person too, right? And then you yeah. you just you just run away. I, I think I, I had all three up too. Uh, this is an interesting part in the game. Actually, I think this is the or, part where I roam up. No, this isn't. Oh, I, I, when does that happen? Did we skip it or like what? No, so, no, it's soon. Cause oh, I was, it is soon. It's like it's, in the yeah, next minute and a half. Okay, it's, yeah. It's, so this is a problem right here, though. When you I mean, we can't this, do this ward is kind of pointless because you're not going to walk up anyways. Even with this vision, there's not enough. We don't have vision of enough people on their team to walk up and hit this tower, right? This ward's uh, kind of pointless right now. Um, you're just kind of going to sit here now, AFK for a bit. So, ideally, what happens here? This is what a lot of people make a mistake of too. Don't feel like you're locked in the bottom. Why not just okay? You, you shove this wave out. All right, let's go to like when when it happens. Is it loading? No, it's not. Okay. All right, let's see this. If you shove this out, immediately, you know, okay, immediately based on the map, you don't have your Thresh. Four people are missing. We're not walking up here, right? We don't have any vision. If we have vision of, like, the whole bottom side jungle, sure, you can walk up, but obviously we have none, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have the means right now to be able to get any vision in their jungle because that's way too risky to walk in there. Right? We have no support. We have no vision of people. We could easily just walk into someone, right? And almost, yeah. to be honest, think about this. If so, if there's a least instead of been in the bush, if, yeah. if their Sejuani was instead of on this scuttle right now and decided to just be here, you could have been dead. So what happened? What we need here? Dead. All right, we shove this wave out as soon. As, we know that as soon as we hit this, because we've already looked at the map, we've already evaluated our options, right? We know we're not walking up anywhere past this. So what we're gonna do instead, because we can see how long we have through this wave, we can see how long we have until their next wave will hit, right? Because the minion waves are obviously matched mm. up, right? So we need to use that information to now, okay, instead of sitting here doing being bottom lane, we don't have enough gold to reset for anything, so we don't want to reset. That's kind of like a waste. So what we'll do is we'll just walk up this way, and we'll just hover for something. And now if something breaks out in mid lane, we're in position to rotate there. Because what it, you know, imagine this. Their bottom lane shows up to catch this wave, or at least just Jin, and you're on the way mid right now. And he's farming this under tower, and you're Elise and Thresh, whatever, and... Let's pretend, I mean, okay, Malzahar's dead, so he's dead. But Thresh and Elise are kind of near mid lane. Now, we're already walking up. We hit here. But by the time we hit here, the wave's hitting the tower. But it doesn't matter because if Jin's bot, we can't contest him anyways, right? He's just going to push it into us, and we have to wait for it anyways. So we don't really care about being bottom lane on time with that wave. So what happens, though, is by the time the wave hits here and we make it right here, 
we're in position for if anything does happen. Mm-hmm. No guarantee something does happen, but if it does, that might be another a double kill we pick up or one kill, whatever. But that's something we pick up, and that could turn the tide of the game. Otherwise, if we make it mid, and they're let's say they're they start pressuring mid because Malzar is dead, right? We can help relieve this pressure, and then after this, uh, once Malzahar is alive, or once we've cleared this wave, cleared the pressure, Mal- depending on how the the state of land looks right now, Malzahar could actually cover bottom lane for us if we don't have a good chance to go bot right now. Otherwise, you just clear out the mid wave, you come back to bottom lane, or you fight the mid lane fight and you come back to bottom lane right after, right? Mm. And now, by the time we've done all that, the wave's hitting our tower, and we've missed maybe one CS, and we're back for it. Um, otherwise, you know, let's say that we get to here, and you're like, oh, but there's no guarantee a fight happens. It doesn't matter. At least you were there. Like, you're not going to miss anything by being here, right? You came up here. Yeah. You're up in this area. Nothing happens. Wave hits, like, in the lane. Okay, well, nothing's happened mid. There's no pressure being... Ha- nothing. Just nothing's going on, so I'm just going to walk back down and catch the wave. But, you know, 50% of the time, if something happens in mid lane. And in this elo, more like 75% of the time, something breaks out, and we're in position to catch something. And you're not losing anything if if nothing happens, but you're only putting yourself in a position to gain something, right? Mm-hmm. Or or come out neutral, because a lot of the time, what happens in high elo, and I, I understand that a lot of players in platinum won't uh, be able to reflect this macro with you, but a lot of times in this case, I, I'll go mid lane, I'll take this mid tower or not mid tower, I'll, I'll eat this mid CS, and I'll try to clear out the next wave with my thresh. Um, oh, otherwise, Lord. I'll reset it. If I tried to take mid farm, I'm gonna get flamed. Well, what you do, you you have to use, you you have to communicate with your team. You go mid and you say, "Hey, Miles, clear bottom lane." So Miles goes bottom lane and he gets to eat all this. He gets to eat this whole wave that Jin's pushing in while you're eating this CS. And then once the waves are at a good point that you can rotate back down, you switch. Mm-hmm. But that that helps a lot because now you'll be able to catch this mid wave. Obviously, you're not going to get to this wave in time, right? But, um. Just, just hypothetically, you'll be able to catch a wave, and then Malzahar won't miss anything either. Instead, if we sit here in bottom lane for another minute, waiting for this wave to come back to us, then let's say Malzahar is still respawning, coming mid, and they're just shoving in another mid tap wave, and now no one's getting this whole mid wave. It's better that at least you get it. At least someone gets it. And obviously, Thresh can get it right here, but no one cares if Thresh gets it. That's a waste, right? Yeah. So m- maybe it sounds like. I don't know if your question like, are you sure this will really happen? But dude, I, I guarantee you, you'll find you'll pick up so many kills doing this, dude. So many kills doing this. If you could just no. rot- if you could just recognize that you have a chance, you have you have your interval of nothing's happening for you on your side. As soon as this wave goes down, you recognize that I have an interval of like thirty seconds to now go do something and just hover. And if nothing if nothing happens, great. But if something does happen, even better, right? Mm. Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, or do you concerns? think it'd be better for better for me to hover? Or do you think I should just take Krug since Krugs are up? I, I the problem is, I don't think you're strong enough to really solo. Like, okay, I mean, you can solo Krugs, but they're pretty strong. Like, they'll take damage out from you. So if if you take Krugs and come back down, um, here, let me put it this way: Krugs is okay when you have IE because you can you can end up critting it and like half healthing a whole Krug, right? Or one shotting mm-hmm. a mini Krug. If if in this case, Malzahar's mid, there's no pressure being emitted anywhere, and you're just you find that going mid might just not help you, or like maybe maybe let's say instead of uh, there's let's say that Malzahar killed their mid laner, right? And you see Jin and Karma down here, so like you know that there's nothing like no one's defending mid. You don't have a reason to really go there. No fight's gonna break out. You have two people mid freely pressuring this tower, right? That's when you can be like, oh, okay, well, I can just opt for Krugs because I'm not going to have time to go up there and do anything, right? Because if it if your mid laner is pushing their tower down and you're down here, by the time you get up here, your mini wave has been cleared and now it's reset again and now Maul's heart doesn't want you to take his lane because there's CS coming to your bottom lane. So that's when you can take Krugs, right? But it is, a lot, most of the time, if, if it's even if it's even like 1v1 in mid lane, it's Thresh, Thresh against their mid laner just, just farming, that's even a time for you to just go hover. And, and the reason I say hover is better than Krugs most of the time is just because like, there's just so much fighting going on. People just fight for no reason, dude. People don't think about it. They just go in, and you just get so many free kills, man. Especially with, like, this Caitlyn's ulti. You can just pick up so many free kills. Like, I promise you, dude. There's so many kills wait- waiting to come your way, dude. Like, yeah. only go for Krugs when there's truly, like, you truly see no other option. But a lot of the time, hovering will do a lot for you. Gotcha. And this is something I want to note. 
Um, maybe I could have said this earlier, but I do think um, I don't know. I think you said you're not really familiar with LS, right? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar with LS. Okay, well, one thing you'll find from that LS tends to tell people a lot, and you know, um, maybe this sounds weird or whatever, but he likes to talk a lot about people's clicking, like how much they click, where they click, yep. why Zen they click. talked about that with right. me too. I, so I just think your clicks are you just have you're not clicking fast enough. With AD Carry, dude, do uh, you play sports at all? Uh, yeah, I play. I actually played professional basketball. Oh, really? Well then, yeah. here you go. Okay, well you know you know one of the big things that a coach will tell you, especially you know like growing up when you don't really know the concept, um, when they see you just standing there, they're like, dude, fucking get on your toes, man. Stay on your toes. You know, be ready to go. Mm-hmm. You're not you're not standing flat footed, um, waiting for something to happen because you know just just naturally if if you know sports, you know that if you're on your toes, you're you'll move quicker. Yeah, I can react faster. Exactly. You you you're you're, you're you're ready to move already. Like your feet are already ready to, to push you out. Like you're ready to go. It's the same kind of concept where instead of like, you know, so it's on your toes, it's more like you'll see a lot of, uh, if, you, if you watch high low streamers or get pro players, a lot of time you'll see them just clicking like this, 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 this like back and forth. So their champion yeah. just going like this, like over and over and over and over. That's kind of the same concept or not kind of, it is the same concept. Um, you're wiggling a lot. Uh, you're making it look hard. You're making it harder for them to predict where you're going to move because you know. And then what happens is when you're going left and right and left and right really fast in between CSing. Now Karma is going to aim a Q. Which way is she going to aim it? Who knows? She's going to have to guess if you're going down or up. And what happens is because you're already moving so much, your eyes when you see Karma's Q, you're, they're ready to okay. I need to click up or down depending on where we see it coming, right? And Karma's Q is a little harder to dodge than other things, but this yeah. plays out for a lot like of things. Like a blitz hooker, yeah, hooker exactly. It, it just keeps. It, it's like you're staying on your toes. You're keeping ready. You're ready to react, and it it really, really does make a big difference in terms of like clicking fast and also clicking with direction. You know, okay, so here you're kind of just clicking. Uh, maybe it was like more 10 seconds ago this one like right here so let's do let's just follow your movement right here i'm going to do it try to at least and obviously since it's paused or live it's going to be hard we go down we go like this way then this way then this way then this way then up here and like it just doesn't we're not going we're not moving into anywhere that we need to be moving like that does that make sense mm-hmm. so more so like our clicks need to have purpose so if we're going to be clicking like this Okay, let's go to a pocket where karma can't hit us, and now let's just keep our clicks up back and forth like this, close to your champion too. Click, try to click, try to always click, not right on top of your champion, but within. I would say the farthest you want to click away. Like obviously, if you're clicking, I mean it's different. But like when you're walking, you tend to want to click like right, like within this radius, and that just makes it so you're in more it's control of your yeah, yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah. You're in more control of your champion, right? So then if you're if if Sejuani comes up to ulti you and you're clicking like this way, now you have to to react. Your mouse has to go all the way down here. Whereas if you're just clicking like this, your mouse is tighter and you can just move faster. Also, you can you're, the angle your champions your champion that ang- why can't I speak? Your champion moves at like a tighter angle and it's easier to just juke people out. And you will notice a big difference when you do that. And and I'll, what I'll even do just to warm up sometimes is I'll go into a training mode, set down three bots, and I'll just. Between every single auto attack, you know, it's 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 like a triangle. You auto this, and then you click here, click here, auto, click here, click here, auto, click here, click here, auto, click. You know what I mean? And you switch switch it up too. Sometimes go down, sometimes go up and down. Like just switch it around, and and you want to do that in in fights. You want to always be moving in fights because it makes you harder to predict where your movement is. Because people tend to uh, what people tend to do is they tend to want to shoot where your uh, champion's looking, right? So. A karma, when you're playing against a karma, what a karma will do is when, when you're moving and she sees, uh, let me think of how to explain this really properly. When karma sees that you're looking this way, right? Her, her, or if you're, you're walking this way, karma, if karma was up here, she'd be queuing like this, right? Mm-hmm. But when, when you move and cut, people who know what, know what they're doing, like a good thresh player, what they do, um, instead of hooking right away, you, you'll see this sometimes, is like, let's say Jin's up here. What Thresh will do, instead of trying to hook from here, if he has Mobies, he'll run at the Jin, right, to get it point blank. Yeah. Because it makes it harder to dodge the hook. So then what they'll do is they'll wait. Um, Thresh is a little different because he doesn't have, like, the instant hook, but just for the example, is they'll wait to see, because they know you're going to juke. They're going to assume you're going to juke. They'll, he'll wait to see Jin moving this way, and then he'll wait till Jin turns this way one time, and then he'll aim it at that because he figures Jin, that's Jin's juke. So what, happens, so what a lot of the time you want to do is just, like, be cutting back really fast so that they don't know where to throw it. Gotcha. And it also just helps you 
be able to react to it faster. So like you move one way and he starts on the hookout and you move the other way right away. Oh god, one sec, I'll be back. Jesus Christ, my dogs. All right, I'm back. Sorry. Um, okay, next thing, anyways. All right, this is probably one of the last really valuable things in this game, and this is the rotation, right? So what's yeah, important? This is, this is the rotation. All right, you. Whew. And this again involves um, map, right? You see on the map that your release is in bottom side, so that that's within range of you. Also, Karma is right here, so she's in position to start to move up to Elise, and Thresh is already moving up. The minion wave is not even collapsed yet. So, like, you moving up right now does not hurt you, because Jin will still have to push it out. So, if, if again, this is a time where, because Jin's going to push you in no matter what at this point, right? We already talked about that. If you walk up, and again, you're hovering here, and nothing happens, then by the time Jin pushes out, you're just back down here, and you're back in the lane, right? Mm -hmm. But if a fight does happen, we're in position, right? We're already on our way up. So that's exactly what we want to do here is we see people moving up and we're ready to go up just in case. And this is where we're saying move up. <clears throat> and Jin actually moves up too. I mean, at least we get an assist off it, right? Right. At least we get something. Well, more so than that, if you didn't show up here, these people all die. And Karma doesn't die, right? Yeah. The, your Thresh and Elise would most likely be dead here if you didn't move up. See? And, and now we come back down, and we didn't miss anything anyways. And now, let, let's just say, if in this case, you know, if Jin actually just went for the wave anyways, now it's just a 4v3. And you yeah, guys want it even harder. We and then, them down. exactly, and you'll you'll win you'll win the fight. And then what'll happen is either, um, depending on how long the fight takes, you'll look at bottom lane. And what you'll do is you'll see how many minions of his are left on this tower. Is there enough that you'll be able to go down here and catch it? Right, if he's already pushed your tower. If the answer is I'm not going to be able to get more than like two minions, then you're just going to come mid and push tower. mid. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, if you can catch the whole wave or if a mid just doesn't look push pushable, if there's no wave here, then you can just go down, right? Go back to your lane. But that'll also open a lot of opportunities to push mid lane out. <laughs> To be honest, I almost want to say with because of how low they all lived, we should have almost probably gone mid here anyways and just pushed that tower down. I think we could have probably got it or at least got a lot mm -hmm. of damage on it. But I have a I have a couple of videos that I put on YouTube that go over a little more about like a slow push and more advantageous um, times to use it, and I'll link I'll link you that so okay. you can check it out instead of me having to discuss the same conversation of slow pushing so yeah, many times. It. Yeah, uh, that's probably pretty much it. That's going to be useful in this video, huh? Um. Let's see here. Yeah, because you guys just get four man tier. Pretty much nothing you can do about that, sadly. And Malzor actually gets a mid tower for this, I think. So it's actually not a bad trade. And you actually survive too. So, yeah, that's actually worth it for you guys. Oh, let's see what happens from this point. And then at this point.
don't want to overextend on here, but we go for it. See, at this point, personally, I would say take these Krogs and then rotate mid. Because you don't really want to be down here anymore. Yeah. Just because if, if it literally said Juani can solo kill you here, you know what I mean? Like anybody pretty much can solo kill you. You don't mm. want to walk up and get caught. It's better to just the be mid. The one AD carry. Yeah, and, and, and again, you know, yeah, exactly. And at this point, it's better to be mid just, you know, for if this fight breaks out. And then your Malzahar or Fiora can take bot lane. And then you cover whichever lane they leave. Because Dragon's... Well, and you can go top here because Dragon's not up, but we might want to be mid more just because it's a safer lane because, you know, we've lost bot and top tower and you get pretty easily easy to kill from the rest of the people. So if you're in a lane without a tower, that just puts a lot more uh, risk onto you. Other people have a much easier time escaping. Yeah. Look how long this fight went on for, dude. They were like still struggling, and now they're going at it again. And now they're still going at it. You literally recalled, came mid, and still got into it. Yeah. All right. Um. Let's see. Traps. It's fine. We're going mid lane. Yeah, this is a really big Oriol T. That was actually like a game changing Oriana ulti. Damn, that ulti actually ulti was actually way bigger than I thought. Literally, probably won them that whole fight. Then I have one like last. Okay, yeah, I don't think there's much more in this part. Um, the last thing I wanted to do or go over where let me look six to twenty, no, seven twenty five. Okay. Then this is more like defensive trapping, right? Instead of like last time we talked about being offensively trapped. Maybe it was, yeah, okay, right here. So see where Karma's hugging the wall, right? Mm. And that's because she wants to get a Q angle, right? She wants to walk up here so she can hug up here and get a Q on you. So what you do again, we we, we drop a trap here for pressure, right? Didn't mean to do the circle. Mm. This can be trap her. Now she can't walk up this way. She has to loop down here. And then you can now, because she can't walk right here, you can hug up here completely. And now she can't Q you, right? Because you can just sit behind this caster and because this trap will force her um, down here. And if you know if she's still trying to hug up there, with, even with that trap down, you can just put one right next to it, right? And now they have to play this angle down here. And you can just sit up here and try to like clear the wave, match the push, right? Um, and then yeah. again, if they do get to your tower, at this point, because they're poke, and you don't, you know, you want to put a little bit of pressure off yourself, you just try to, don't put traps like under your tower, but right outside the tower range, right? Like three traps like this, because now if they want to walk up, they only have certain angles to go through. And that also helps Thresh out because now Thresh knows that if they're going to walk right here, that he can just hook right here and it'll definitely hit them because they, otherwise they have to walk into the trap, right? So that mm. that's how we use traps for pressure on defense. And you always want to do that if you're stuck on a tower, especially against a poke lane. <clears throat> but yeah, that was the last thing I wanted to say. Gotcha. So I think biggest thing is... Really, for you, pretty much want to try to click more and really look at your map a lot. Look at your map and try to try to think about being in position to rotate, or try to think about okay, the waves at a reset spot that I'm not going to lose anything. So there there might be stuff going on right here. I don't have anything that I can actually do in the lane, so I'm going to walk up a little bit. Right? Again, doesn't mean you have to overcommit to it, but just linger, hover, like be there for the team, be in position for if a fight breaks out, you're ready to clean up or pick up a kill. You know, don't have to overcommit but you want to be in the position for it. And then also um, thinking about lane control in a poke lane, you know, we, we don't want to try to freeze it on them. We need to get the lead before we can freeze it on them, right? We, we can't freeze with a Thresh if they're just going to be able to push it in because Thresh can't counter their push. Thresh can't stop Karma and Jin from walking up because his hook's not reliable enough from a long range, right? And because they can just stand, they can stand at his max hook range, um, that's why it's it's too hard for them to hit the hook because, I mean, a max hook is really easy to dodge from them if they just move to one side, right? It's pretty lucky yeah. to get the hook. So that's why it's really hard for him to uh, be able to do anything if you try to freeze it on them early. That's why they can just walk up and push because he can't really get a hook. And that doesn't necessarily just have to do with how good the Thresh is. That that plays into it a little bit. But in this case, in this lane, like almost no Thresh is going to be able to get the hook unless you guys already have a lead. 
which you obviously don't. So like against a poke lane, we have a melee support or an engaged support. You need to you need to stay healthy, wait for your opportunity to get engaged, and then you go all in. But you, do, you don't take trades, you don't do anything, you don't let yourself take any damage, you just stay healthy, wait for it to engage, and then you play off of that. And then once you once you get the lead, now we can go for freezes and slow pushes because Karma can't, and Jin can't walk up anymore because now we're so strong that Thresh doesn't care if they try to hit him, he'll just walk up and engage, right? Mm. So think about think about a lot of matchup stuff, you know, poke versus poke. How do I play this out? Oh well, you know, whoever has the better poke, try to position in the that's based on more pockets, uh, depending on the type of poke. Um, if you can't trade with them, if if they're gonna out trade you, you just don't take the trade and you wait, right? You have to. Um, like engage versus engage, pretty much whoever gets the first kill at that point is going to be able to freeze the lane and zone the the other two, right? If you had like Thresh versus Blitz, and if their Blitz killed you, now Thresh has to play defensively with you, and Blitz is playing much more offensively. And they can freeze it up here, and you guys can't walk up because you're already behind, right? Does that make, but, uh, you know, yeah. in, in that case, it's whoever gets the lead first is going to pretty much have gotcha. control over the lane. But in this case, right. they will always have control, and you will always have to play the defense until you get the lead. Then you can play offense. Got you. All right. I want to confirm like the 280 carries that you think I should play, because I'm I'm gonna like spam them. That's like 280 <laughs> carries I'm gonna play. Okay. And um, I, I get to play a lot because of my job. Luckily, like. Nice. I Me too, dude. I'm <laughs> yeah. just kidding. Um, but uh, so we said Caitlyn, and is Caitlyn for sure? Caitlyn for sure. If you like Caitlyn and you want to put the time in, I do recommend her. Okay. But there's, I think there's a lot more to her than just think, like, don't just think, like, oh, I'll just go into Summoner's Rift and spam her until I get good. Because that might not necessarily work. What you need to do is use the training, well, use the training system and, like, learn the mechanics yourself while you're doing it. Like, in between games sometimes, you know, just warm up, go into practice, um, practice your net traps. Practice putting traps in front of dummies, like just a certain amount of distance. Obviously, they're not going to walk into it, but just practice yeah. it. Practice, like practice, uh, pretend this is a dummy, right? Practice auto-attacking the dummy and then dropping a trap right after. Like canceling your auto-attack with a trap, right? You, yeah. As soon as the auto goes off, drop the trap here, right? Because that's, that's really practical and what you'll do in like a 2v2. Is pretty much uh, if if you're on the offensive in the, the 2v2, like if you get the engage, what you're going to do is you're going to try to walk up closer. So that your auto range is like not at max, because then what you can do is you can auto and then put the trap behind them. So if they're if they're on the, if they have to run away, right? If you know you're gonna win the fight, like if there's no chance that they kill you, if you walk up to a, like a closer position to auto attack W behind them, um, do that. Otherwise, you know, defensively you auto attack them W in front of them. Here, what good. I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna actually share my screen real quick. Sure. And because like. If I'm gonna come back to you, I want to get better at these champions, right? Sure. These certain champions mean you pick. So I'm just do blank, whatever. All right, here. Do, do, do. Whatever, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So I'm kind of just gonna like list. Shit, like a dab pen like, or something. And then you just pick two. That's what I'm spelling. <laughs> this is a weird. Oh, is really? Okay. Nothing. Sorry, I was just talking to someone. Oh, okay. Um, so, Caitlyn, Kate, Kaiza. Uh, Did you just buy it? Lucian, it's like the vein. Don't mind Tristana, Trist, Zaya. Mm, and that's probably it. <laughs> yep, my favorite day he carries. Eight guys solution of interest side. <laughs> what was that? I was just reading them. Oh, um, you're good. All right, well, right now I would stay away from Lucian and Zaya, and I would say stick to Kate, Trist, and Kaisa of those people right now. Because okay, so. I think once you learn those three, like that's when you can start really transferring mechanics. Lucian is just like Lucian. First of all, he's not amazing right now. Second of all, he just has he's so complex mechanically like there's so That's many mechanics crazy. to worry about you know why here I'm, I'm i know show I, you i've heard someone else tell me that lucian is like easy mechanics someone said no 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 it's not even that it's um zen for my elo highly recommends lucian well i think lucian's really good at just like pub stomping 
like people who want to fight all the time. But the problem is Lucian is really, really hard to execute properly. Hey, I'm I'm going with whatever you say. Kate, Kaiser, Triss. Now give me like a order. Like if Kate's <laughs> always open, go Kate. If Triss is always open, go Kaiser. If Triss is always open, go Triss. Like an order. So like it'll be one, two, three. I would say for you right now, well, that's hard because I think Tristana and Kaiser are pretty equal in terms of their difficulty. So that's kind of on you. I think. Well, okay. I think Tristana is easier, but I think she's harder to learn how to properly use her W. Like that makes sense. Yeah, like, I, I know. What a lot mean, of what I'm just scared that I'm gonna say use Tristana, and then you're gonna play so many Tristana games where you're just jumping into them like very poorly hey. late game because I just see that happen way too many times. It's whatever you think. Whatever you think's best. All right, I would I would say. Let me see. What's your Kaisa win rate right now? Let's check out win rates. Let's go by your win rates, dude. Oh lord, Kaisa. Yeah, why is my look so slow? I got you. I'm doing it for you right here. Kaisa win rate fifty three, eighty seven games played. Yeah, uh, hey, Trist Tristana seventy five percent. Oh wow, Tristana KDA is actually pretty good too. I don't know. I would is say. Use, I would say try to use Caitlyn as much as you can. And then when Where thinking about the second one to use, it's pretty far down there. You only have like eight games. Um, instead of like picking wow. one of the two, use those two like situationally. If, if, if they have a really, if they have a really, really hard poke lane, I would say play Kaisa over Tristana because she has a better time using her like abilities to help uh, keep the wave cleared, whereas Tristana's ease makes it pretty much impossible. Like if you were against that, Karma uh, oh, Jin. so hard to farm under tower because of very e with passive, yeah. yeah. So with, again, when you're against like a Karma, a Karma Jin, you know, kind of lane, I would say okay, Kais is probably the better pick than Tristana if Caitlyn's not the option, not an option. So Kate's number one prio, Kaisa and Triss if available. I mean, like whatever's better situational. Yeah, and then Tristana is really good. For, like if you're going for a kill lane, Tristana will be really, really good. Like if they have a, if you have like a Thresher, Leona, or something, Caitlyn's not available on the enemy. Bot lane is like uh, Soraka and so something. Here's you know? my Smurf that I climbed a plat four with, and look at my win rate on Caitlyn. Yeah, that's really nice. And he told me drop it, never play Caitlyn ever again. Dang. I mean, I don't know. I would say keep playing Caitlyn if that's what you like. Hey, I mean, he's no and... longer my coach, right? So. <laughs> Guess not. I see I that mean, guy out there. That was, the... that was his decision. Yeah. So. True. It's not like I just dropped him. He was a cool guy, cool coach, but hey, nothing yeah, I can do. Right. Um, Anyways. Otherwise, um, other than that, yeah, do you have any I'll, more questions or anything? No, nah, I'll basically one trick Caitlyn, and I'm going <laughs> to hit you good. up probably like next week. All right. And I'll be we'll available. See you next week. All right, man. Awesome. All right, take care. Bro. Yep, good luck, dude.